This is the High School Football America podcast for March the 12th, 2020. I'm Jeff Fisher. Well, it's going to be a big weekend in Arlington, Virginia this weekend. Uh, The National Alliance of African American Athletes will be honoring its uh, Franklin D. Watkins Memorial Award winner. There are six finalists. We put the story up on High School Football America earlier this week, but we wanted to dive deeper into what this award is about. It's got a great history dating back to the early 90s, and to uh, give us that history lesson and bring us right up through 2020, uh, on the line is Everett Pearsall, the Executive Director of the National National Alliance of African American Athletes, and here's he's here to talk about the Watkins Memorial Award. Welcome to the show, Everett. Hello, and hello to everyone who is listening. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to have you here. And um, uh, before I started rolling tape here, I was telling you that uh, I wasn't as aware of this award as I should be. But before we get into the award, let's talk a little bit about the National Alliance and, and its its purpose and how long it's been around and what good it's doing for uh, young African-American athletes around the nation. Great question. Uh, the National Alliance of African American, American Athletes is an organization that myself and a group of individuals started in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in 1989. Right after I graduated from college, I was purposed to do as much community service as I was brought up um, and my parents taught me to do. But going into the classroom and going into boys clubs and the YMCAs and talking to kids, one of the things that we very rapidly noticed is that The kids accept your message uh, when you bring an entertainer or an athlete in the room to give the message. And so it didn't take us long to figure that out in a way that we patterned an organization around it. And I always say that uh, if kids looked up to mathematicians and accountants and Mm -hmm. teachers, uh, it'd be the National Alliance of African-American Mathematicians. But (laughs) it is the athletes and and the rappers and entertainers that uh, our youth look up to and accept messages from. And hence, we've named it after that. The idea is that obviously we continue to do programs of communities all over the country to try to uplift youth, empower youth, and create a path for them to to be successful and uh, and good contributors to society. Talking with Everett Pearsall tonight, the executive director of the National Alliance of African American Athletes. And uh, the main reason he's on here, because this is a big, big weekend in Arlington, Virginia. And before we get to what the event's going to be all about and our our six finalists that you have that'll be there, uh, let's talk about the, the award. And by the way, you know, this Pennsylvania boy always loves talking to people from Pennsylvania. Harrisburg's not that far from the Lehigh Valley, and I think the 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 person that this uh, award is named for, Franklin D. Watkins, is is a Pennsylvania native and a Pennsylvania coach, if I'm not mistaken. Can you clue in the audience a little bit about uh, who the award is honoring? Absolutely, Franklin D. Watkins was one of the individuals that helped us to start this organization, and uh, before we really got it into its fruition, he passed away unfortunately, from cancer. But in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area, he was extremely well-known for being a coach, a person that was would give everything he had to help any kid that was in need. He was a family man and a God-fearing man as well. And so instead of going to pick some notable named individual, we figured we would take that person who was a contributor to society so that you know you can have the same impact regardless of what your profession is regardless of what your sphere of influence is and what your name is. It is those who you come in contact with that you can help the most. And he gave everything he had to the community, and hence we named the organization, this award rather, after Franklin D. Watkins. So uh, let me ask you this. You know, obviously Coach Watkins, as you just said, you know, has made a, a big impact on student-athletes. And I, I don't think um, – coaches these days have even lost any of that, right? I think it might be even more responsibility. I was just curious what your thoughts are on uh, today's, you know, coaches and their important role in in shaping the lives of student athletes. I'll tell you, if you talk to any athlete, one of the persons that they revere the most are the coaches that they've been involved with in their journey. And the reason for that is um, myself, I'd say for an example, grew up in a single parent home raised by my mother. And so that male individual that could step in and give you some guidance and help you in terms of giving you discipline and structure and all the things that you might be missing in your home, he would wear many hats. So as a counselor, as a teacher, as a person that would give you a sense of responsibility 
and direction. And so all those things in terms of the way that you influence a kid at a time that, that they really need it, it's important. And I, again, I'd venture to, t- to tell you to ask any athlete, uh, some of the most influential people in their lives, and I'll bet you a couple of them that they'll say were most influential will be the coaches that have touched their lives and their journey. Yeah, and I think, uh, and you and I discussed our age before we rolled the tape here. Uh, you're you're 54, I'm 59, and you know, back in the day, our coaches used to be, you know, basically you'd see them. Well, you played a lot of sports, right? It was a multi-sport thing, but you'd see your coach, you know, three to four months out of the year. Nowadays, if you're a football coach, you're 365, pretty much 24 seven, and I I think that puts a lot of pressure on the the coaches. I know we're going to talk about athletes here, but I, I I think that you have a pretty good take on on what the coach is giving back. Uh, do, do you think there there's a, a good to that or a bad to that with how much time coaches now have to invest in a sport? Well, I think the, the only thing that could come out as a bad to that is the pressure to win. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is because there is so much pressure to win. So as long as I think that the coaches really stay focused on the kids and not the program, it's a good thing because, you know, you keep an individual focused, you keep an individual busy and and wanting to be the best at their craft, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, when you mix in that that drive to win, and that starts to overcome uh, how much you care and or look out for the kid, that could be the only thing that could turn that positive into a negative. Yeah, and I, I always talk about this. Being from Pennsylvania, I had the, the honor, and I'm sure you run into these people, some of these coaches that have gone 30, 40 years, you know, three or four decades, uh, the burnout factor is going to be a lot different, I think, for the modern-day coach. We're talking with Everett Pearsall, the executive director of the uh, National Alliance of African-American Athletes. They are going to be awarding their Franklin D. Watkins Memorial Award, the winner. They have six finalists in Arlington, Virginia, over the weekend. And uh, it's it's an impressive, impressive class. And before we kind of dive into the kids by name, the first thing that hopped out to me is GPA. And uh, having done this for over 40 some odd years, I always try to impress upon people. And and I know the word is thrown out there with the hyphen student athlete, but truly this award is looking at that student in the student athlete. So tell the listeners a little bit about what you're, what you're looking for out there when you get to your six finalists. Good, good question. I'm going to backtrack this a little bit if you might allow me to indulge. As an organization, the National Alliance of African American Athletes, we do a number of things. We do football camps. We do clinics, town hall meetings. Uh, we do community projects. We do uh, SAT scrimmage where we help enhance kids' opportunities through the SAT. But the Watkins Awards become our flagship event. The thing that you mentioned in, in your introduction, introduction to me talking about the award itself is the fact that you get nominated based on your athletic ability. In other words, we nominate the top 150 football players, the top 50 baseball players, and the top 50 basketball players. At that point, your athleticism is totally negated, and we ask you to put together a package that has an emphasis on what you've accomplished off the field. In other words, what your grades are, your scholastic aptitude, your community service, what your peers think about you, how you can articulate yourself well, and an essay so that a group of people who will be grading your package who may never meet you and don't know who you are, aren't athletes, they aren't coaches. They can look at this package and see what you represent off the field. Mm -hmm. And that's how you become an individual that we've honored. And that's how you become part of the 100 plus individuals that have come down for the Watkins Award over the last 29 years. And let's then take it to the next step is, before we get to the modern-day athlete, 2020, who are some of the people that you've honored through the years? Great question. I'll put some household names out there, and I do remember every one of them um, in our, my experience with them, but Gerald McCoy, Jameis Winston, Ted Ginn Jr., Eric Reed, mm-hmm. Dwayne Haskins, Devin White, Mercedes Lewis, Josh Dobbs, Bobby Okariki, Lorenzo Alexander. We've got 55 guys out, out of the 100-plus with the GPAs that you've mentioned, over 4.0s that we've honored going to play professional sports, a number of them first-round draft picks, which is amazing when you look at kids like Jameis Winston and, and, and some of these guys that have gotten 4.4 grade point averages but become the number one pick overall in the draft. 
pretty amazing. You got a pretty darn good football roster there with those names <laughs> you get. And oh, by the way, they're smart as well. Everett Pearsall is on the line. He's the executive director of the National Alliance of African American Athletes. Again, their uh, Watkins Award will be handed out this weekend in Arlington, Virginia. And now let's kind of get to the here and now. You, you, we've just had the list of all those great ones. Who Who's the next great one, two, three, four, or five, or six? Because I'm, I'm sure it was hard to pick out of the six. We can't unveil the, the winner yet, but uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, the class of 2020, if you will. I will. And I, I will tell you that we're pretty special in the way that we handle uh, the guys that we bring in and the guys we call the class. If you come to any of our Watkins Award banquets and any of our events, you'll see there really is no differentiation between the individual which we announce, and we call them the standard bearer or the individual that represents that class, if you will. We call them that because we expect all five or six of those individuals that we honor to represent the Watkins for their entire lives, to stay in contact with one another and do the things that we expected them to do at 17, and none of them have failed. When we talk about some of the kids this year, we're talking about Vernon Broughton. I believe him to be the number one defensive lineman in the country with a 4.1 GPA coming out of Houston, Texas. He was an Under Armour All-American kid. Tremendous GPA, tremendous athlete. Terrell Tonka Hemingway out of Conway, South Carolina, with a 4.4 GPA. Again, one of the top defensive ends out of the country going to South Carolina. And I did, I forgot to mention that Vernon Broughton is already at the University of Texas. Mm -hmm. Michael Reese, again, another defensive end out of Nashville with a 3.8 GPA, already at Duke University. We got Cody Simon out of St. Peter's Prep with a 3.9 GPA going to Ohio State. Christopher Thompson, already at Auburn, out of Dallas, Texas, with a 3.9 GPA. Last but not least, Court Williams with a 3.8, 3.8 GPA. State champion St. John's Bosco in the Los Angeles area, Harbor City, California, to be exact. Tremendous athletes, but better students, better kids, better individuals. And, and you know what? It's an impressive class, and, 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 and thank you for honoring all of these kids. And, and one of the things that I'd love to know, because, again, you, you said the organization, the, the National Alliance of African American Athletes, is, is more than that last word of athletes, as you said there. But what are some of the messages you like to spread? And I'm sure you're going to spread them at the, at the award, awards banquet this weekend. What are some of the, the, the messages you want to tell kids today about education, uh, especially in, in a day and age when there's so much thought about, well, I can just go from, you know, uh, the peewee, whatever, football, basketball, baseball, to a pro. <laughs> and by the way, we know what the odds are of that happening. So what's the, what's the general message you'd like to give as a, an individual and the founder of this organization? Great. Thank you for that opportunity. I'd like to break it down into two points. The first thing is that even if you make it as a professional athlete, and I've seen them all that are able to go to college and go straight into the NFL or the NBA, that portion of your life is so small. You'll go out and play that sport for two, three, four, even if it's 10 years. You're now 30 years old, and you got over half of your life to go. What do you do with that? That's where the education kicks in. That's where you value the things that you've learned and what you've put into what you represent off the field. Moreover. You see individuals that we're honoring that I've just talked about going to the Duke universities, the Ohio States, the Auburns, the best programs in the country in terms of sport, but they've got GPAs that prove that you can be the best athlete possible, but that does not give you an excuse to be the best person in the classroom and the best person in your community, because that will, that's the one thing that will move you forward in life into really something you will be able to hang your hat on and look back on and know it's helped you in every aspect of your life. Talking with Everett Pearsall, the executive director of the National Alliance of African American Athletes, uh, the Watkins Award being handed out in Arlington, Virginia this weekend. And uh, it may seem like I'm picking on both of our ages right now, but but the next question I want to ask you is, uh, I, and, and having been around the student athlete for so long and most of my life has been focused on, on you know, covering high school sports, storytelling, basically telling the story of, of America through the lens of high school football, you know, I learn something every day at 59 years 
years old from some of these kids. Sometimes it may just be as simple as, I know in 1978 when I was a senior, if somebody came up to me with a microphone, I probably could not have handled the interview at that time. That impresses me, the the way kids have matured a lot quicker and all that. I was just curious, you know, you being around some of these outstanding athletes like you have been, you know, uh, fi- you know, co-founding the the organization and all that. What are what are some of the things that you learned from kids in this day and age? In a day and age when sometimes you know maybe kids aren't getting the best rap or whatever. Have you gotten any uh, got any stories for us that could say you know, hey, this this old dog here just learned a new trick from a young man. <laughs> Every year I'm amazed at the class of individuals that we bring in. I have to tell you, I do learn something different from every class where they, the level of maturity and how far ahead they are, how much better they are than I was from athletically as well as academically. I'm amazed at it. These guys are not only getting involved in organizations and nonprofits, but some of them are starting their own. And when you talk about the fact that they've got the microphone in front of them, we build several components into our weekend that kind of assist them with that and, moreover, help them to be even more comfortable. When they come to the Watkins Award, they get an opportunity to walk a red carpet. might be their first opportunity to talk and be interviewed on a red carpet. We give them opportunities to speak to multiple kids all over the community in Washington, D.C., to continue to let them know that there's a lot expected of them as they continue to go through their career and the selflessness that they uh, will continue to have throughout their career will be the thing that we expect from them uh, as they get back to the community and continue to be great examples. And, uh, and again, everyone that is there to celebrate them is all about what they represent off the field. I would venture to say that most of the people will meet them and maybe just come to know whatever they've done on the field for the first time. But every, everyone there from sponsor to individual uh, ticket holder to board member uh, to whomever might be at my event, they're there because they're so ecstatic about what these individuals represent off the field and the track record and the group that they've had before them and, and the impact that they can have on the ones that come after them. But these guys have done some tremendous things. I mean, they've gone on to, to win Super Bowls, national champions, you name it, NBA championships. You name it, they've all done it. Gerald McCoy is my keynote speaker this year, five-time pro bowler, 10 years in the NFL, and I recognize him for being a good student. How about that? (laughs) And that's what this is all about. We're talking with Everett Pearsall of the National Alliance of African-American Athletes. He's the executive director, specifically speaking about the Watkins Award, uh, named in honor of Franklin D. Watkins, as you heard, a uh, a football coach in in mid-Pennsylvania, the Harrisburg area. And we're going to close out with this, Everett. Um, You you talked about Coach Watkins and and the fact that he lost his life early to to cancer and all that. Here we are in 2020, uh, another stellar class. Uh, We're going to have a winner named. Uh, What would you think Coach Watkins would say about where this organization and this award and specifically this class is in in the grand scheme of things? I think he'd be very bashful that we named an award after him because he was not at all about himself, not at all about accolades. He was just all about giving back. And the thing that uh, that touches me every year is, and this year will be no different, is that his two sons will be there, his widow will be there in our presence, and we can continue to hold his name up high. The, the joy that I take every year is the fact that I get to explain who Franklin D. Watkins was and what he represents, so that whomever you are, you have a responsibility to give back to the community and the impact that you can have in your own community and all the lives that you come in contact with. And so I tell you again, uh, he would say, you know, I wish this award was named after someone else because I don't want the attention, but I'm very proud of all the individuals that have been honored in, in my name, meaning Franklin D. Watkins. And that's what we strive to do every year, make him proud. Well, Everett, uh, I'm proud to, to get to know you, as I said at the beginning. I'm never ashamed to say, you know, I don't know everything. It's a big country. But uh, to learn about uh, the National Alliance of African-American Athletes, you now have a friend in high school football, America. We'll do whatever we can to, to promote what you're doing and what your message is. And it's just been a, an honor for me to, to learn about this. I, I, I am just so proud of people that, uh, you know, take an idea. Most people don't realize how hard it is to take a little idea <laughs> 
and, and, and then make it last for a while. And you've certainly done that. And uh, we salute you for all you do for student athletes and coaches and, and all the African-American uh, student athletes around the country. So thank you for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you for allowing me to spread the word. And thank you for all the great work that you're doing as well. You can keep up with high school football news from around the nation by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com or following us on our social media on Twitter at HSFB America. That's our handle. And on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash high school football America. We're also on Instagram at high school football America. This is Jeff Fisher, and you've been listening to the High School Football America podcast.